Hey everyone, welcome to Wicked, where in this video we're going to learn what an XML HTTP request is, how to make one, when to use one, compare it to the Fetch API, and also its relationship with Ajax. Also, just as a note, all the code that I write in this, as well as the blog format of this video, will be available on my website, where the link is in the description. So first off, what is an XML HTTP request? Well, an XML HTTP request, or XHR, is an API used for communication between a client and a server, such as making a GET request to a URL to retrieve data. And despite having XML in its name, an XHR can be used to retrieve JSON, HTML, plain text, and XML, so just about everything. And using XHR is powerful because it enables parts of the web page to be updated without doing a full page refresh. And when it comes to AJAX, XHR is used as part of the asynchronous JavaScript and XML, or AJAX, technique. And AJAX is essentially a model to make web applications quicker as they update the user interface without reloading the entire page. They just change bits and pieces of it. But to get started, let me show you how to create an XML HTTP request. So what I have right here is just an HTML file with two script tags where we can write some JavaScript. And to create an XML HTTP request, we create an instance of the XML HTTP request class. So it would be new XML HTTP request. And we're going to capture that inside a variable, and we'll call it X HTTP. And also, just a quick note, the XML HTTP request class is built into browsers, so there's no need to download any external software or library. But now that we've created our XHR, what we want to do is initialize it. In other words, we need to tell this request where we want to send it. And this is done with the method open. This open method takes a few arguments. The first is the HTTP request method the request is using, such as get or post. Here, we want our XML HTTP request to perform a get request. So we specify get. Get requests are essentially used to retrieve data from a provided URL. So our XHR now knows the request method to use, but it doesn't know where to send the request to. And we can specify this in the second argument by providing a URL. And here, we're going to send a GET request to an API called JSON Placeholder. And this is just an API that's basically, that's typically used for, for uh, testing purposes. But what we do is HTTPS dash dash JSON placeholder dot typicode.com and then dash users. So we're going to be accessing the users route. So this code right here sends a get request to the provided URL. And this URL will provide us a list of users in a JSON format. So as we could see, even though it's called XML HTTP request, what we're getting back is JSON, which is usually the typical case nowadays. But so we have our XML HTTP request set up. We just need to send it off now. And that is done with the message dot send. And so let's save this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it with an extension I have called Live Server. So we can see it's opened up on port 550. Let's go and have a look in here. And I just want to show you our, <coughs> our network tab, show you this request in action. So if we go down here, this users, we could see a get request sent to typico.com dash users. And right now we're not, we've sent the request and the request was successful by status code 200, but we're not actually responding to anything at the moment. All we're doing is just sending off a request. So now let's focus on that. So this request that we sent, it specifically returns an array, a JSON array of users. And we can also see this actually, if we go into our dev tools and we go to response, and look at this response is just a JSON array, and each of these is a JSON object, where the object is a user. We've got ID 1, ID 2, 3, and all these users. And so if we want to display these on our page, or basically to handle this response, we need to use the property of this HTTP um, object called onReadyStateChange. So what we, what we set this to is a function which is a callback for this ready state change. And this function is called whenever the ready state property on this H H X HTTP um, or XML HTTP request object, whenever this changes, this method here, 
this function that we provide, is what will be called. And this ready state property can have the values of 0 through 4, where each number represents the state of this XML HTTP request. Specifically, if the value of this is equal to 4, that means that the operation was complete and the data transfer was successful or it failed. But it just means that the operation is complete, whatever we've done or wherever we've sent this to has worked or failed, but it's gone to completion. So what we can do in here is we could just do a simple if statement. And if this is the case, we just log operation completed like this. And so I think that should automatically refresh. So let's go back into our console, operation completed. So this is what's being called. And we can now further check the XHR operation by checking the status code. So if we go into here, and we not only check that the ready state is four, but we also check that the X HTTP status is equal to 200, which means it was successful, then we can say operation completed successfully. So four shows that we've done, this request is finished, and then 200 says it was successful. And now we actually want to access this data in here. So in here, or that's a WebSocket, in here we want to actually be able to access this data. And to do that, we use the response property of the XHR object. So what we could just do is document.write and then xhttp dot response. And now let's go back in here and we could see all our JSON data that we retrieved has been printed out to the document. Anyway, let's go back in. And so the response property here it, what it returns is either a DOM string, an array buffer, a document, a JavaScript object, or blob, depending on the value of the response type property. And the response type, or the response type property defines the response type. And we can also check the type of the response data from the response headers. So if we click on this and we look in here and we go, we look for response headers. If we see response type, or sorry, content type. So the content type of the response right here, you can see is application as JSON, which matches what we see in here. So then we know that the data in here will be uh, JSON data. But so this is everything to sending and um, setting up an, H X, an XML HTTP request. But now what I wanna do is I wanna demonstrate the power of an XML HTTP request and AJAX. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna retrieve a random user from this API here on a button click, and then we'll display that user without reloading the whole page. And to do this, let's first create a button that will be called that will initiate this. It'll have an on click property, and we'll just call that send request. And then it'll say the button text will be send request. And then let's also do a Let's create a paragraph tag, and we'll give it an ID called my paragraph like this. And now inside our script function, or our script tags, let's create this send request function. And what we wanna do above this is first, let's instantiate our, or acquire our paragraph tag by getting it by its ID. And this ID will be my paragraph. And then inside this send request function, let's move all this stuff. Oop. So let's take this here. Paste that in here. I need to install that plugin that styles this or indent, indents everything for you, but bear with me. So we've got that in here. And what we wanna do is not send a request to dash users anymore because we want to retrieve a specific user. So what we're going to send it to actually is users dash and then the ID of the specific user. And we want this to be random. So to do that, I'm going to do math.floor, which will round down a number, and then math.random 
times 6, which will give us a random number between 0 and 6, these together. But we, there isn't an ID of 0. The lowest is ID of 1. So we'll append a 1 here. And then, instead of just writing it to the document, we're going to do p dot enter text equals xhttp dot response. So now if we go into our file here, we see the send request button. If we click on it, let's see if we got any errors. xhttp dot response is not a function. So that is because it isn't a function, it's just a property. So let's save this. And let's try this again. Let's click send request. We get an ID of five. And now let's click it again. Three, six. We can also see in our network tab the IDs we're getting. So five, two, three, six. Send another one. Six, five, four, two, five. And you can see what this data here is changing, but the page isn't actually refreshing. And this is basically Ajax in action. And you can see how this could be very powerful. Anyhow, let's go back into our code. And now let's talk about um, XHR versus Fetch. So another API for working with HTTP requests and responses is the Fetch API. And just like at say XHR, the Fetch API allows for fetching resources asynchronously across a network. And we will not go in depth into the Fetch API in this article, but know that it is a more modern way to perform HTTP requests. In fact, anything we can do with XHR that can't that we can't with fetch will be available with fetch sooner or later. However, this XHR isn't all bad because as the fetch API is a more modern way to make HTTP requests, it isn't supported in certain older browsers. And therefore, a good use of XHR is maybe as a fallback for older browsers that don't support the fetch API. But so there we have it. Learning about um, what an XHR is and how to use it is extremely useful. I feel like it takes away a lot of abstraction as to what's going on with HTTP requests and also with the Fetch API if you're familiar with that. But anyhow, um, I want to thank you all for watching this video. Once again, the, um, the code here that I've made this will be available on my website and as well as a blog format of this video and the link will be in the description. But I want to thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing this video today and I uh, hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.